Hello there! Welcome to the first episode of Truth and Legends, a show that resides between the middle ground of the expanded universe and the new canon. Today's topic of discussion, Dark Empire and the Rise of Skywalker. We will be discussing six similarities between these two stories. Number one, Palpatine returns. Number two, Biss and Exegol. Number three, World Destroyers. Number four, Luke and Ben. Number five, Leia and Rey. And number six, Palpatine's final form. So the idea of Palpatine returning from the dead using essence transfer was first introduced in Dark Empire. In it, the Emperor managed to transfer his essence to a vacant clone body right before dying. But this process has its limitations. The clone body is deformed and rapidly decaying. This causes Palpatine to search for a stronger vessel that he can transfer his essence to. These ideas are shared with the Rise of Skywalker. In it, it's revealed that Palpatine has been in the shadows pulling the strings all along. He transferred his essence to a decomposing clone body right before dying. Both mediums use dark arts mixed with cloning to keep Palpatine alive. Both mediums explore the force power of essence transfer, in which the host of a body can transfer their essence into another vessel. So you may ask yourself, how did he survive? With the help of cultists on Biz slash Exegol, Palpatine transferred his essence into a clone body. What is his current state? The creature is dying. His vessel cannot hold his awesome power. He is held by life support. What are his motives? To transfer his essence into a greater vessel so he can reign as the one true emperor without limitations. We clear on that? Gucci. Biss and Exegol. While there were many Sith fortresses known to the galaxy, few remained undiscovered by the public's eye. Biss and Exegol both have the same role in both stories as Palpatine's secret Sith fortress. Little side note, I really like this element of both stories. Biss and Exegol really feel like hell to me, thus making Palpatine feel even more like the devil. Gotta love me some horror in my Star Wars. So both places were also the center of his personal cloning facility, and both housed a cult of soothsayers that has been conjuring an army in honor of his great return. World Destroyers Palpatine returns with new weapons. So what are they? Planet-killing weapons conjured by the Sith cultists. What are they capable of? So in Dark Empire, we have the World Devastators that uses the energy of a planet as its own fuel for the planet's destruction. On the other hand, we have the Rise of Skywalker that has the Sistan class Star Destroyers that uses Death Star tech to give the ship power to destroy an entire planet. So how do they come into play in the story? Well, in both stories, Palpatine offers his fleet to one of our protagonists in exchange for something. So Luke has a very interesting story arc in Dark Empire. It builds from his struggle with the dark side that was already established in Return of the Jedi. Luke starts off his story chasing down Vader's personal palace in Coruscant, where he finds a holocron that belonged to Palpatine. Luke strangely demands R2 to keep playing it despite his objections. So Kylo Ren begins his arc in the Rise of Skywalker in a really unstable place. The Rebellion's flames cover the galaxy, but he's on the other side of the galaxy in search of a phantom. He starts off his search in the remains of Vader's castle, where we find him slaughtering Vader cultists in search of a Sith Wayfinder that has the location of the late Emperor Palpatine. So both kids manage to find their way to Palpatine's secret Sith fortress. Palpatine's interaction with the young knights is extremely similar in both mediums. So after Palpatine vaguely explains his return, he offers the knights a fleet that can rule over the galaxy. 
Supreme Leader Ren and Supreme Commander Skywalker pledge their allegiance to their one true emperor. Do it. Why? Well, both want to finish what Vader could not, but both also have their own personal agendas, and the Emperor knows this. Leia and Rey Leia and Rey also find themselves in a similar place in both stories. They are beginning their Jedi training but struggling with it. The thing that is keeping them back is their own fear of the future. Rey is afraid she'll end up evil like her grandfather, and Leia is afraid she'll take the same path her brother and father did. They both realize that the Jedi's strongest enemy is fear, and their path leads them towards overcoming their own fear. They end up being the catalyst for Luke and Ben's return due to their selfless acts. Both stories lead to Palpatine's final form after the betrayal of their knights. Palpatine in Dark Empire transfers his essence to a younger lightsaber carrying clone. Then Palpatine calls upon a massive force storm that is capable of destroying the whole rebel fleet. But to the Emperor's surprise, the Jedi twins, with the help of the luminous beings, managed to trap him in his own doing, thus eliminating Palpatine for now. In The Rise of Skywalker, Palpatine uses the power of the Force Diet to rejuvenate himself and become his final form. Palpatine calls upon a massive storm of lightning that is capable of destroying the whole rebel fleet. But to the Emperor's surprise, the Diet, with the help of the luminous beings, managed to end Palpatine once and for all. Conclusion So as some of you may know, I was disappointed with The Rise of Skywalker and picked up this comic book after watching the movie and boy did it help. While The Rise of Skywalker is far from perfect <coughs> editing and pacing, <coughs> it does have some really interesting concepts borrowed from Dark Empire. The comic's dark mysticism and horror elements are all present in the movie and it made me realize how much I love when Star Wars deep dives into the occult. A giant fascist military organization being secretly led by the devil and his followers? Creepy! And not so far away from the current state of the world. So to conclude this video, it seems that the expanded universe and the new canon aren't that different. The Rise of Skywalker was without a doubt inspired by this comic and paid its respect to it. Never in a million years I thought I was going to see a film adaptation of Dark Empire on the big screen. It's the same feeling Marvel comic book fans must have when they, when they adapt a really obscure comic into the MCU. It's strange. You don't know why they did it, but hey, it's there. It happened, you have it, we have it, boom, Papa Pops is back in the movie. So thanks for watching, and remember, there's always truth in legends.